Hi everyone, it's Carissa at Sprinkled with Glitter and I am here with a little different video for you today. I'm going to be using the Sandlot card kit which is the August Studio Calico card kit and I'm flipping through some of the supplies that come in it here. But today I really want to focus on the way, the different ways that I used this adorable stamp in the Sandlot card kit, this little gumball machine here. And I really brought those gumballs to life. So we're going to focus on that today. It's not going to necessarily be an entire card, although you are going to see four cards. So you're going to see me use these little gumball stamps and these sentiments. And I'm going to start out with just getting my gumball machine stamp out and putting it on my stamp press because I want to create a two color gumball machine. I want the body of the gumball machine to be red and then the little glass globe part to be in like a sea glass color. So I'm just starting out with some post-it tape here and I'm going to mask off that portion of the glass part of the gumball machine. That way when I put the ink on the stamp I'm not going to get any ink onto this glass portion. So I'm just taking these little strips of post-it tape here and I'm going to mask off that part and then once I get that masked I'm going to bring in some red pigment ink. This is an Avery L pigment ink and I'm just going to ink up that whole thing. Now I can go ahead and just ink right over that paper. It's not going to make a difference. It's going to protect my stamp but make sure if you're using a pigment ink don't get the ink on your fingers because it will make a mess. So once I get that all inked up, I'm going to remove those masked pieces and I'm going to take this over to my cardstock. This is just some Nina Solar White cardstock that comes in the kit and I'm going to press it down onto that cardstock. Now I'm going to rub all over this because this is a fairly solid and large stamp so I'm going to make sure I get a good impression and you can see it there. Now I wasn't quite happy with the depth of this red so what I'm going to do is I'm going to layer up another coat of that red ink. So I'm just going to replace my masks right back over where they were before and that's really easily done. And then I can ink it back up in the same red pigment ink and then using my stamp press I'm just going to position that straight over the first stamped image and then stamp again. And using the stamp press I find is the easiest way to layer these over. So now I have a really nice red image. Now I'm going to use the sea glass color, but I want to make sure my stamp is nice and clean. So I really like this Hero Arts Ultra Clean Stamp Cleaner. It just really seems to get my stamps nice and clean. So I have a little stamp scrubber here and I have that and I'm just going to clean that off. And then when I'm done, I can wipe it off with a baby wipe and I'm ready for my next color of ink. So this time I'm going to mask off the body of the gumball machine. So I'm using the same post-it tape, two new pieces of post-it tape, but it's the same post-it tape <laughs> and I'm going to mask off that body. Now it juts up a little bit in the center here so I just took a little piece and covered that middle part. And then this is a pigment ink in, I believe it's called sea glass. I'm not real sure, but it's linked in the YouTube description. And then I can position that right over the gumball machine again and stamp that down and that will give me that kind of illusion, the glass illusion on that bulb portion. Now I am going to create several cards, so I have a couple pieces of vellum here and I'm going to stamp and emboss a whole bunch of images or sentiments from that stamp set. The first one is this You Are So Sweet, but I just want it to say sweet. So once again with the post-it tape, I'm going to mask off that sentiment and then I can ink it up in some Versamark ink and stamp it onto my vellum. Now I did prep the surface with a powder tool to make sure that I didn't get any stray embossing powder anywhere that I didn't want it. But I'm going to stamp that down and then you can see here when I put the embossing powder over it, I just have that word sweet. So just some white embossing powder over that stamped image and you can see all of my sentiments there and I'm just heat embossing those. On vellum, make sure you keep your heat tool moving so you don't warp it too much. So now I am not focusing on how I did the entire card, but I'm just going to go ahead and mount my gumball machine. You can see I have my sentiment behind it with some foam tape onto my card. I have just a couple strips of um, pattern paper from the card kit there. And then I'm going to take these 
enamel dots. These are all Studio Calico Color Theory enamel dots, and I am just going to arrange them within the gumball machine. So I've just taken a variety of sizes and colors and put them up in that glass bulb, and then I put a couple at the bottom or the base where that opening is to kind of make them look like they're spilling out of the machine as well. And I just thought this was so much fun. I love the way this card turned out. It's probably one of my favorites ever, but you can just see how really fun and um, realistic those enamel dots make this gumball machine. So for the second card, I'm going to use the gumball machine again. It's stamped in the two colors, and I'm just using various colors of pigment ink to stamp these gumballs within that glass portion. And there's no rhyme or reason to the way I'm doing it. I'm just trying not to make to put two of the same color close together or whatever. I'm just stamping it, and you can see it's all filled up there. And then I'll stamp one in the opening as well. And then I'm going to take and stamp this gumball just a few more times in a few colors. And then I'm going to use that quarter inch circle punch up there and punch those out. And this is going to allow me to kind of pop some of those up on the bottom of this card. So you can see me punching them out here. And then just using foam tape, I'm going to adhere those to the bottom of the card, kind of scattered about. Now, this wasn't really my day for crafting, and you're going to see a couple examples of this, but this is where this card goes wrong. <laughs> Just hang in there with me. I'm going to show you how I fix it. Glossy accents is one of my favorite ways to bring stamped images to life, and I'm just getting it started there. And I'm going to add some glossy accents to these gumballs here, which on the bottom, it's fabulous. But when I go up into that glass portion, I started adding it to gumballs, and I started adding it to every single gumball, and it just looked like a massive blob of glossy accents instead of all these different shiny gumballs. And so you can see it's kind of looking blobby there. And so I thought, well, I don't really like that. So instead of leaving it as it was, I decided I was going to try to fix it. And so I brought my glossy accents back in again. And I thought, well, I'll just fill the whole thing up with glossy accents. And that was like the worst idea ever. So I'm letting you see my mistakes so that you don't make them. And you can kind of see why I did what I did. So I filled in this entire thing with glossy accents, and you can see my power then went out. So I'm using my iPhone <laughs> my iPhone light to kind of get the bubbles out of here, but I just thought this was funny because you can see that nothing's really kind of going my way today. But anyway, long story short, I ended up re-stamping that whole thing, doing a little bit of card surgery and pulling that off after it was dry. And so I have a new gumball machine here. I'm going to position it back on the card the same place that the other one is. No one will ever know that I messed this up except for all of you on YouTube. And then instead of covering every single gumball, I'm just going to go through and add some glossy accents to just some random gumballs in there. Not every single one, but just several of them in there will have the glossy accents over it. And this ended up being a much better result for me. Um, and just really achieve the look that I was going for. So be careful when you're putting glossy accents on everything, it kind of makes a mess. But you can see there, in the end, this all turned out well. And the good thing was, it was just a stamp. So I can restamp it as many times as I want. Now, once again, not my day for crafting. My craft knife was not behaving. So I wanted to make a shaker card with this gumball machine. So I'm just using my piercer to make a hole in here so I can cut it out. And I thought I would be able to cut this out with my scissors, and that was just a bad idea all around. <laughs> you know, I don't do things perfectly, but I let you guys see my mistakes so that you know not to make them as well. So I'm just trying to cut this out with some scissors, and I decided that this wasn't going to work. So I kind of coaxed my craft knife into working one last time to get the center of this gumball machine cut out. I just want the middle portion of that glass bulb cut out. So I'm just, I kinda had to finagle my craft knife, but I finally got the center of that cut out. And now I'm going to make a shaker card. Now this piece of acetate comes in the kit, so I'm just going to cut a little portion of it. I just need it big enough to cover the back portion of that, so I'm just cutting a little square out. And then I'm going to adhere it to the back of that stamped piece using some Tombow Mono Multi Glue. That's one of my favorite um, 
liquid adhesives for card making. So now I have that acetate there on the back side of that gumball machine, and now I can add a double layer of foam adhesive. Now when you're adding your foam adhesive for shaker cards, you wanna make sure that all of the corners are touching so there's no gaps in the adhesive around the back side of this, and that way it'll keep all the guts of your gumball machine within that window. Otherwise, you're gonna have leaky sequins or leaky glitter or whatever it is you're filling it with, they will leak if they're not touching. So make sure that the those um, pieces of foam tape butt right up against each other, and you can see here how they're all connected down there, and I have all the foam tape on the back. And now is, um, you need a piece of cardstock behind this. Now you could stamp this directly on the card base, but I'm not that good, so I decided just to use a piece of white cardstock. And I'm gonna stamp a few gumballs behind this so that they'll kind of be stationary even when everything else is moving. So that piece will eventually go on the back. I've gone ahead and removed the backing to my foam adhesive, and I'm gonna go ahead and fill this with a variety of different colors of Studio Calico sequins. Once I get enough in there and I'm satisfied with that, then I can add the backer piece and you can see there that I have some stationary gumballs. And I'm gonna add some sequins to the front of this gumball like there's gumball machine like they're spilling out as well. And I'm just using the multi mat medium and my quick sticks tool to adhere those to the front of the shaker piece. And then that whole thing just goes on to a card base with a little sentiment. This is me kind of Putting it all together here, I'm just gonna tuck that sentiment behind that shaker card piece. And that completes my next project. So a few different ideas here. I have the enamel dots, I have a shaker version, I have some glossy accents. I'm just gonna give you another look at this completed card. I think shaker cards are so much fun. And I didn't film this next card, but I thought I would show it to you anyway. It just once again stamped and popped up some of those gumballs. And then I coated them in some rock candy stickles glitter, and that just made them really shiny and sugary and yummy. So for more information on any of these products, you can visit my blog at sprinkledwithglitter.com. I have links to all the products used in these projects in the description at YouTube, as well as over at my blog. Thanks for stopping by today. I hope you were inspired and I hope you have a fabulous day.